I do want to know what the fuck happened to Lil Tay, which is why I, uh, you know, friend of the show, Jabri, made a new video. And we're absolutely going to watch it. from head to toe until you bring back that little girl I suspect it's going to be child protective services the answer has to be child protective services right April 15th, 2018. A sizable crowd had congregated in front of the Americana Mall in Glendale, California, where an apparent dispute was said to be underway. You want to run away? An infamous brawl between two of the most hated internet powerhouses of the time, Danielle Brigoli and Whoa Vicky. After blasting her voice across airwaves in 2017, Bad Baby had all but captivated the world with her annoyingly viral catchphrases and a public throwdowns with local sewer around Victoria Rose Waldrip. Tough stuff? Put your bag down, tough stuff. That's what I'm saying. Hey, what's up? Come on. Hey, what's hey. up? After exchanging words and slurs and a convoluted back and forth that I can't even begin to paraphrase here, Vicky and Baby were finally set to squash their internet beef in person when the confrontation suddenly turned sour, ending in a whirlwind of punches and empty threats hurled at multiple parties. Amidst the chaos, though, stood an individual about three heads shorter than everyone else. A nine-year-old girl with freshly bleached hair and a colorful vocabulary, to say, to say the least. Nothing good happens in Glendale, okay? Nothing. I'm not saying that because I'm Turkish and as the world's largest Armenian diaspora, it's just facts. That wasn't a real, I'm not being real Turkish right now. I'm not be, being real fucking Ottoman Empire right now. I'm just saying. To many at the time, Lil Tay was nothing more than a member of Woe Vicky's entourage. With her follower count reportedly doubling in the aftermath of the coverage, Lil Tay would not only become verified as a result, but garner over two and a half million followers and a 15. Also, if you're an Armenian and you're in this chat, you already know exactly what the fuck I mean. Okay. How for power, one of the most reactionary fucking places. Everybody's just angry. A million impressions per post in the coming weeks. Soon being name dropped by Eminem, featured on the biggest morning show in America, and becoming one of the most Googled people in the world, all by the end of 2018. Right before vanishing just as inexplicably as she came. So, what happened to her? Uh, and who was pulling the strings behind one of the youngest and most perplexing influencers in internet history? That's what I hope to find out as we revisit the puzzling trajectory and real life implications of the century's youngest flexor. Good morning, these colors. This looks the youngest flexor of the century. Keep flexing with them haters. nine-year-old who told me she's come here to Hollywood to pursue her dreams of being a social media star. Claire Eileen Hope was born on July 29, 2007 to a Chinese mother and Canadian father in the city of Vancouver. Her parents were never married and actually separated when she was just two years old. In the beginning, Claire was really no different than any other- 2007, she's a juicer. That's what happened. Started watching XQ Cow and uh, started behaving. A young kid. She enrolled in ballet classes at the age of four, with her skills carrying her all the way through several Royal Academy competitions, in addition to playing the piano, skating, swimming, singing, and studying Chinese. It's safe to say Claire Hope was exercising a multitude of talents. Ah, an age as old as time itself. Libertarian guys with Asian wives. <laughs> 
talents from an extremely young age. Being a straight-A student at her elementary school, her mother would go on to describe the girl as a mild-mannered, well-behaved kid. With so much potential, there'd be no telling just how far her abundant capabilities would take her. But I don't think any of her teachers expected this. Okay. Man, what the f*** are they putting a baby formula these days? Claire hit the internet with a bang around late 2017. Originally posting to Instagram under the pseudonym Lil Gucci Taylor, she became famous for her outlandish personality you wouldn't expect from someone her age. I absolutely followed this saga. Straight up. anyone above the age of five, her persona was obviously a gimmick, right? Not real. But as the lore goes, Tay was a nine-year-old Harvard dropout who made so much money moving bricks that she was able to afford fancy cars, mansions, designer brands, really epitomizing the brazen in-your-face flexing videos that were especially popular around the start of 2018. You know, back when YouTube was really at its peak. Yeah. With scumbags like this making a living off flexing their massive wealth to the dirty proletarian, I guess. Because who doesn't love being reminded how poor they are? In a way, Lil Tay was just the natural evolution in a climate of desperate hype beasts competing for the title of most annoying class trader. But this was easily some of the hottest content of the time. My man! If you could tap into the right audience, the revenue and influence would just bring you even more lavish riches. But what set Tay apart from the rest was pretty obvious. She was nine. Literally smoking hookah on camera. Is, is that her mom? in the background. Of course, it was only a matter of time before she caught the attention of every person with internet access, plunging directly into controversy and thriving off whatever attention she could, whether positive or negative, officially being exposed to millions for the first time by Rice Gum in a video titled Roasting My Sister's Bully With. Wait, he has a sister? I'm not sure if you guys know this, but I have a sister. I actually made a video about her in the past. Bro, explain these pictures, bro. We look identical, bro. That's my little sister, Ling Ling. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I expected. What? Is that a Gucci belt? Is that a Louis belt? It was December 2017, and Rice Gum was on the hunt for the next weird viral sensation to showcase to his audience in the eight figures. Given little Gucci Taylor's uh, <coughs> unorthodox image, Put it down on my wrist. she was the perfect candidate for a video that would generate well over 7 million views. Essentially, in this bizarre little world Rice is conjured up, she's playing the part of his imaginary sister's bully. Not like you should care, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, why does she keep calling him daddy? I'm nine. She's I was nine. born in Atlanta. I'm richer than all y'all broke ass niggas. Uh, I forgot about that. I'm richer than all y'all broke ass. <laughs> Thirty on my wrist. What's all y'all doing with your? Forgot about that. People used to make jokes about how like she should be grounded. Bro, her parents should be grounded, dude. Regardless, this was the first video to genuinely put Tay on the map. And whoever was truly behind the Lil Gucci Taylor persona at the time wasn't about to let this opportunity slip. Because Tay immediately responded with a scripted reaction to Rice Gum's reaction. Going on the record and threatening to Ask your auntie. And making it clear that he I ain't flexing on like Lil Tay. You ain't flexing like Lil Tay. Hey, where are your money bags? In addition to defending her use of the N-word on account of being part black? I'm partially black. Y'all, like, you don't even know anything about me, so why are you just making assumptions? Not sure who told her to say that. Also, not sure who edited stock footage of twerking asses and hard drugs behind a kid who's barely out of huggies. But the spectacle was there. And thus, the views and money began to roll in as Rice Gum promptly uploaded another reaction to her reaction to his- The wildest part about this is that, like, Lil Tay is doing something at nine years old. Obviously, her parents are, or whoever is in her life that's, like, an adult is coercing her to do this. Team Star is like 50 and he's doing it in 2021 
all on his own damn self, dude. You guys know what I'm talking about? Where Keemstar literally like was uh, was was beefing with a fucking Twitter account about how like uh, you know he's nine percent African. That's crazy, dude. If this is at least like a nine year old little girl who's been led astray. Keemstar did this exact same thing from saying the saying the N word all the way to claiming that he was uh, partially black. Like, last week, he did that. Not the saying the N-word part, but... This reaction. I hate this website so much. Basically, just calling her broke and arguing she shouldn't be flexing on those less fortunate than her. So, you know, the exact thing that made him famous. Not sure how you could have the energy to repeatedly go after a literal infant in some kind of fabricated internet beef, but too many viewers were captivated at this point. Tay was making a name for herself, and much like witnessing a Rolls Royce being engulfed in flames on the side of the highway, it was hard to look away. <laughs> Little Tay. Oh, I've heard about this kid. I dropped 200 racks on this car, and I'm only nine years old. I'm <laughs> this literally reminds me of my childhood. Little Tay Moneyway continued to grip YouTube throughout the first quarter of 2018. Creators like Sniper Wolf, Atozi, Miamulis, Danny Gonzalez, The Fine Bros, and The Right Opinion, to name a few, were well aboard the Lil Tay clout train at this point. Even PewDiePie couldn't resist the e- Bro, he's making fun of his friends, dude. Uh, aren't he- isn't he homies with all those dudes? Well, not Fine Bros and shit, but like, Danny Gonzalez and- and The Right Opinion and shit, aren't they like homies? <laughs> Easy views. I feel like I'm not, I'm not allowed to say anything. And I can't even blame them. What with her flippin' inappropriate attitude contrasted with the fact that- PewDiePie be like, only I get to say the M word. As long as I'm playing PUBG and I'm on a bridge. <laughs> Got him. Why is this little girl saying the N word? Only full grown adult Swedish men should be able to say it. On a bridge, playing PUBG that she was a child, it's not like there wasn't entertainment value. There was a lot to discuss, like what was a kid like her doing around massive celebrities and overall fantastic guys like Takashi 6 9 I mean, the two hopped on an Instagram live together to discuss how much they hated Bad Baby. I'm, ba I'm banning Bad Baby from LA. Takashi 6 9 should literally not be allowed to be near Okay, humans in general, for the betterment of public welfare, but like definitely not minors, okay? But really, the entire thing just devolved into Rat Boy wandering around the streets of Brooklyn while Tay spilled apple juice on herself. This is my city, like nobody touch me. PewDiePie reform, come on. Okay, bro, why are you fucking defending PewDiePie in here? Um, yeah, I think, I, I don't think he's like a, I don't think he's like that anymore, but, but what do you not want me to make fucking couple jokes here? Like, you, you're really gonna let me not make some jokes at the expense of fucking PewDiePie? Really? Like, making fun of, the Jeff Bezos of YouTube. Which means it's my fucking city. Yo, Significantly less exploitative, but you know. He watches the quartering? No shot. PewDiePie still watches the quartering? Ugh. Oh, Ew. shoot. Look, look. I spilled something on my. Uh, yeah. Okay. He's not even listening to her. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I said, quick picture. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's take a picture. Come on. Yeah, let's take it. Yo, here, take a picture. Like, who thought it was a good idea to drag her out to a Chief Keef concert just to grab some quick photos before the show? <laughs> Where's Chief Salsa? Even catching up with Roblox enthusiast and Trump's personal bootlicker, Lil Pump. One of the big superstars of the world, Little Pimp. But looking back <laughs> on everything that was now, so good, and Trump's. Trump was just fucked. 
such content, dude. What a, what a king. What a fucking god of content. Brought up Lil Pump. It is, like, do you guys remember the Bonanza? He was doing, like, eight rallies in a day. Flying all around the country. And he brought Lil Pump on in Florida. I do. I miss him, dude. He's so... I, the problem is when he can actually reach out to his hogs, he can do the brainwashing really effectively. So, like, when... When he is actually out and about and he's fucking yapping, like he does get the hogs really riled up and it's very dangerous. You know what I mean? But like, fuck man, his content was top tier, dude. It was so good. Joe doesn't have the stamina. He doesn't, he doesn't believe me, folks. Joe Biden does not have the stamina. He can't even do one rally. Wheel him out. Wheel the old man out, old man Joe. I call him. He fell off plus he's white plus ratio. Believe me. You're such an Alex Jones and Trump fan. Dude, I when will you motherfuckers learn? I love content. Okay. I am agnostic about content. People are incredibly entertaining. Conservatives are incredibly entertaining. You get them, you catch him off guard, you catch him in a moment where they're fucking where, where they, they are just going to be themselves. They're dumb as fuck, dude. It's hilarious. They're hilarious. Like, you just... Of, of course, as long as you don't, you know, think about what they're actually saying and whether or not they believe it or the consequences of those words reaching to millions of people and then all those people fucking literally, you know, following out uh, his desires... Obviously, when you think about it like that, you're like, okay, well, it's not so funny anymore. And, uh, you know, I, I, when you don't think about those things for like a moment, it's just fucking hilarious. He's, he's a sassy bitch who's petty as fuck and loves drama. Now, it's clear it was never about Tay's actual hopes and aspirations because as more details began to emerge in the following months, audiences no longer saw the novelty in Lil Tay, instead expressing genuine concern for her well-being, as well as questioning who in her life could be instructing her to do all of this. Where was she getting all this money and how was she able to film all these luxuries that clearly didn't belong to a nine-year-old? And more importantly, wow. why waste thousands of dollars? Kind of fucked up that Jabri's just a fucking straight hater, bro. Uh, what do you mean, dog? You already mentioned it in the first four minutes. She developed it by dropping out of Harvard and fucking pushing bricks. Duh. That's a girl boss, dude. People hate to see a girl boss winning. Hashtag stop Asian hate dollars on Gucci when you can flex your Raycon earbuds, am I right? Come on, that, that was smooth. Co-founded by singer-songwriter Ray J, Raycon proved that premium audio doesn't have to price you out. Oh my god. Oh. My segues are better, okay? your order or click the link down below and that's buyraycon.com slash jobbery huge thanks again to the gratuitous saints over at raycon for helping out with these videos how would you describe your life right now i would describe my life like since i'm the youngest flexor of the century i'm richer than like most people like i'm richer than all these broke ass haters hating on me and my life is pretty amazing but i worked hard for it lil tay's career was skyrocketing to impressive heights just a few months after first making headlines with countless managers and talent scouts hitting her up for potential partnerships at least six people told me they were her managers stated one la record producer who was working with tay at one point oh. to create a hit song because of course she made music too lil tay. <laughs> wow, okay, you know what? Let's just move on. But despite the clear uh, talent gap, this gimmick allowed her to make insane industry moves a lot of musicians can only dream of. Getting to hang out with God himself. What's up? I'm with the legend Rick Rubin. No! What's up, what's up? If you don't know who Rick Rubin is, are you fucking kidding me? Yo, I forgot about that, dude. What the fuck? Dude, this entire industry from top to bottom is so fucking scummy. Oh my god, dude.
literally just clout. There's nothing else. Nothing else. Just clout, dude. Nothing matters. Just clout. Ruben is, he probably made your favorite song. On the surface, her character may have seemed one dimensional. Focus on flexing her riches, making fun of popular creators, basically just parroting the same line over and over. But behind the scenes, her team was connecting with Goliath. Wait, did someone just say Rick Rubin is the reason Kanye is a Trump supporter? No fucking shot. Rick Rubin is a Trump supporter? No fucking shot, dude. Are you kidding me? Yes? Okay, Someone, someone's making that up. There's no way. There's no fucking way. No, he's Dave's brother. <laughs> Good one in the entertainment world. After turning down Howard Stern and landing a less than substantive interview with Logan Paul's brother, she was given her own segment on Good Morning America, the most viewed morning show in the US. And it's a pretty weird watch. I'm a Harvard dropout. What city is Harvard in? Um, I kind of forgot because I haven't been there in a long time. Though this was all thanks to a man named Diomi Cordeo, a young manager known for his work with MTV, Republic Records, and Beyonce. After getting in touch with Claire's family, he began to work for them with no contract, just to prove he was trustworthy. The goal from the beginning, as stated by writer Lauren Levy, was to build a brand of meme influencers like Lil Tay and a swaggy wolf. I remember this interview being awkward as fuck. Like, it was, like, very obvious that she was nine years old, you know what I mean? Dog, whoever the f***. Basically, Cordeo had a vision, which relied on making her more marketable for the mainstream, successfully getting her a million dollar headphone deal. Or actually, $20,000, but <laughs> close enough, I guess. Look at my interior. They match my brand new headphones. Y'all can get your headphones, too. Yeah, I like those headphones. I heard you got a million dollar deal off of these headphones, true? Yeah, you already know what it is. Multi be closed a million dollars. What the fuck's she doing at nice guy in the middle of the day, dude? Our deal. Really? Why are you asking, bro? Well, I was just a That's a bar chat. I mean, I guess it's also a restaurant, but still. You be, you behind on your rent? Multi rich, I finna get richer. Though, according to him, attempting to clean up Lil Tay's act would prove to be a challenging and ultimately impossible feat thanks to the input from her half brother, Jason. Snoop Dogg even accusing her 16-year-old brother of coaching her. A lot of people are going to say this and that. We just we just keep going. Kind of sucks that we never got to see Lil Tay's Trump arc because you know she would have been a pro-Trump MAGA grifter, you know? Jason Tion was no stranger to the internet by the time Lil Tay burst onto the scene. Ricey. Oh my God, look at the Cars posters. Look at the Cars posters. It's icy as fuck, bro. Ricey. In fact, he had already cultivated his own niche on YouTube under the username Ricey, where he tried his hand at scathing diss tracks that send waves of terror coursing through the bloodstreams of his victims. Fuck smack, bubba boy, rice again. I'ma pull up by your dumbass house and bang bang with a 45 and make sure no one survives. Yeah, I guess the reception wasn't the best. Imagine wanting to be a rapper so bad, but your little sister is the one who gets name checked by Eminem. Unlike Lil Tay, the 16 year old couldn't rely on a gimmick to support his career, leaving some to accuse the teen of living out his desired life through his half-sister. After all, who would be more inclined to seek out Lil Pump? A 16-year-old rapper? Or a child who can barely tie her own shoes? Additionally, the public became increasingly wary of her family's true intentions as more evidence surfaced online of Tay being coached by her brother off-screen. Bro. Oh. Aubrey once again being a hater. We already established she piled her fucking racks. She knows how to tie her shoes, okay? And and even if she doesn't know how to tie her shoes, okay, some people don't learn that even into well into adulthood. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. You could get velcros, okay? Gucci makes velcro shoes. All right. You you broke broke ass bitch. You still you you out here. You were out here like with your irrelevant ass. You you making a video on me, like bitch. I'm way more irrelevant than you. You're trying. I remember this too. This was sad. Um, he's even saying irrelevant, like fucking rice gum. Isn't that like number one rice gum take? 
I remember watching the content cop. Be relevant, and you trying to be like me. Lil Tay be popping on YouTube right now. Uh, what do you do? You need to be like more ignorant. You have to be like, ooh, Lil Tay, Lil Tay out here. Wait, what did he say again? You still irrelevant, like I said last time. <sighs> What do I say? With the question, where is her mom lingering in everyone's head? The true answer may actually be the most tragic of all. She was always there. Mommy, stop! I was filming! Rumors of Claire's mother, Angela Tian, being fired from her real estate job began to circulate shortly after her boss spoke out against the use of company vehicles in Lil Tay's viral videos. She called and she said, I'm quitting from real estate. In fact, the car shown in this video, viewed over 13 million times, belonged to a managing partner of Angela's real estate firm. So if there was even a single person out there fooled by Lil Tay's life of opulence, it was all thanks to her mom's job. According to this manager, he was only under the impression they would be taking a picture of his vehicle, not using it as a prop for a 10 million plus view video pretending it's theirs. Although her boss- Dude, this is so funny. The boss was like, uh, you didn't give me a cut of the profits. Like, He's not even mad about the fucking car being used. He's mad. He's not mad about the abuse. He's like, why didn't I get a fucking cut? Boss had reportedly felt all sorts of mad, disappointed, and taken what? advantage of. After finding out Angela had been using him as a front for her daughter's hopes of a career, he didn't fire her like many had reported. She was technically resigning, probably after seeing just how much money her daughter was generating after lying to her millions of followers. I didn't shoot in anyone else's house. You didn't shoot in anyone else's house? Just like no one has proof that I did. But the lies it didn't matter so much anymore. Everyone saw through them anyway. Tay had finally reached the lifestyle. She had always pretended to flaunt online, or at least something close to it. As Angela and her two kids were able to exchange their suburban lifestyle in Canada for a more fast-paced life of stardom in LA. Moving in with Josiah Jenkins, a man responsible for jumpstarting the careers of numerous influencers and having ties to big names like Whoa Vicky. If it's one thing I've learned from researching this topic it's that all of these clout demons are heavily intertwined feeding off one another like leeches seeing who can do what for who just the traditional money-making game of Hollywood I guess only with a nine-year-old kid at the epicenter against her will as stated by Jesse Miller of mediated reality Lil Tay's videos involved a parent with her cell phone making choices about how her kid was noticed on the internet expressing what I'd consider a pretty universal concern for the impression these videos and this lifestyle may have on a girl as young as Claire. But after a turbulent few months that I can only imagine were absolute hell for a kid as young as Tay, she vanished. Her account was scrubbed entirely by June 2018 with no prior announcement or explanation anywhere. Just like that, the eccentric character of Lil Tay was gone. With one final cryptic story post reading, help me, the door was left wide open for plenty of speculation. Lil Tay, the internet's youngest flexer, is gone. Her YouTube is gone. Her Twitter is gone. Like, every trace of Lil Tay on the internet is gone. In the months following Tay's sudden disappearance, a rotating door of alleged spokespeople would take turns claiming responsibility for her online brand. Which, of course, flies in the face of her family's assertion that she never had a contract. It was at a point that so many NPC schmucks had tried to hijack her character that Claire Hope, the person, seemed less significant than the reputation that preceded her. As time went on, people were becoming less interested in the individual that was Lil Tay. That is until months later, during a supposed hack of sorts. Over the weekend, someone using Lil Tay's Instagram account posted shocking abuse allegations about Lil Tay's father. This caused huge backlash on social media and her father were I don't remember any of this shit. Apparently sent a cease and desist letter to Instagram after he was receiving death threats from Lil Tay's fans. In October 2018, Lil Tay's Instagram posted once again. This time, whoever was operating the page went all out in creating as much chaos as possible. Changing the bio to hashtag free Lil Tay and hashtag make the internet great again. With the most notable post being extremely serious allegations against Claire's own father, Christopher Hope. Now, 
these accusations were extremely personal in nature. Taking into question Chris's new marriage, child abuse against Tay, alleging that although he had been out of her life for years, was requesting she come back to live with him and his new wife in Vancouver via court order. The Post even goes so far as to blame Chris for Tay's hiatus, claiming that he was afraid she would expose the truth to the world. In the words of Tay herself, he was threatening to have my mom arrested if we didn't go back. I didn't see him for multiple- Why are you guys immediately jumping to the dude did it? Or you think a nine-year-old wrote all that shit? I'm gonna be honest with you, not the squad W right now, but like, it kind of feels like the mom. I don't, I don't know. The dude might be a fucking piece of shit. Probably is. But it straight up, the mom is like a bigger piece of shit. It's not like he was around when she was getting fucking exploited like this by the mom. You know what I mean? She was the one who was the fucking, you know, puppet master. Listen, sometimes you got to fucking tell them how it is, dude. Women be shopping, boys. Okay. All right. Sick and tired of it, dude. That's right, fellas. You know, it's getting too... Getting too pro-women around these parts. We got to fucking reshift our priorities. You know what I'm saying? I'm going my own way. Okay, no fap. I'm never jerking off. Semen retention. I'm just trying to get back on the Scuff podcast, bro. Because he has a little Uzi Vert on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Years. He never saw me for so long. It's obvious he just came back because he wants money. But you have to come in there tonight. You really do. There's no other option here. That was a joke. We don't have to go inside right now. We can just go in my car. We'll just drive somewhere and talk about it, okay? I'm not going. I think you should come with me and we'll just talk about it. You know, it's like, I, I feel like literally this is... <laughs> Might have been better off for her to be with her fucking dad, you know? I, I don't know. Her mom is clearly not a good person. Um, maybe the... I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the dad fucking sucks too, probably. Let's be real. What the fuck? Since when do you stream on Saturday? Or is this a random stream? I literally stream every day, dude. It's, I stream every day, and I tell you the ads are coming at the top of every hour. Like, these are consistent realities. At the top of the hour, there's a 60-second ad break. Okay? And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free um, by connecting your Amazon Prime account. You get one free Twitch Prime. And that's how you avoid the ads. Or Also, you can fucking sit here and wait for a gifter. Some people have get waited for years and have never gotten one, though. There's obviously other ways to avoid ads, too, but, like, you know, you have to figure that out on your own. I contractually cannot tell you. But uh, here's the ad break now. Angela, you got to follow what the judge said. You have, you have to encourage her. You, you have Although it was established Jason had been running all of her social media in the past, there was no real way to verify who was behind this hack other than it was- The thing is like, uh, thank you Simnet Productions for allowing five people to no longer see ads and so did uh, 1536D Snack. The thing is like, the dad could be a piece of shit, the mom could be a piece of shit, I mean mom definitely is a piece of shit, the dad probably is a piece of shit too. OX8088080 with a 10 tier one give subs. Um, thank you. But, uh, like, she might not even want to go with the dad. She might not even want to go with the dad because, like, like when, you're, when you're in this abusive situation, you don't know any better. Like, you're fucking nine. You probably think, like, oh, it's sick. Like, I love being in LA. You know what I mean? I love being in LA and... Jake and Bake live. Any gifters, bro? Really? Wow, dude. Spent all of his money on his cussy. Jake, down bad. Spent all of his money on his cussy. Doesn't have money anymore.
I gotta save money from our GT4 RS since you won't buy me one. Dude, where did this come from? Like, you want to buy a GT4 RS? Like, since when? We've been talking about this a lot now, and I don't, I don't even know what the fuck is happening. Lee Hank, two, three. Thank you for the five, three more gift subs. Also, take a chance. Thank you for gifting a sub to Jake. That was nice of you to help out those who are saving money to buy a fucking GTRS four or whatever the fuck. Rezo is now asking, shameless, dude. KBK003, they give the five, get the subs. All right, let's keep going. It's supposed to be someone who previously. Don't think you remember me, but watching you a while made me lean a lot more left than I ever did. Not that I was ever light, right leaning, but I can't say I'm a centrist anymore. The count created March 24th, 2021. Following is 22 minutes ago. Damn, bro. I hope you know your chest craving death for Jews, no matter their stance on this take, and want the Israeli Jews to be driven into the sea. Hey, I just want to say I definitely have my mind changed about many things thanks to you, which made me lean a lot more left than I ever was. Okay, I was going to make fun of him and say, God damn, 22 minutes is all it took for this dude to change his mind. I'm doing wonders. But also now I realize, you know, maybe, maybe he did. All right, he was in here months ago. Hey, you know what? Thank you, dude. Thank you for fucking watching with an open, uh, thank you for watching with an open, uh, mind. Okay. That was, that's, that's all I care. That's all I care about. A lot of people come in here to hate and, uh, you know, they come in here to fucking bait me and they come in here to fucking say some shit in the chat. And then all I can hope is that even if they come in here to be like, yo, fuck this guy fucking piece of shit or whatever they ultimately uh, turn around and they realize like maybe this guy's not an asshole When are you going to watch a video on Lil Tay, the most mobile chatter? Obviously <laughs> worked with Tay. With a document for I was borderline hard right and you definitely smoothed me over to the left. I used to even work for the Florida GOP Congress people. Holy shit. God damn, dude. Nine months and 11 days to get radicalized. Oh, good one, dude. That's funny. Uh, look, I, I, this is why I do it. This is why I do what I do. Okay. Um, all I can expect is for people to be uh, open-minded and not immediately get suckered into believing that I'm a piece of shit because they saw other people saying I was a piece of shit and a bad person. That's all I can fucking expect. That's all I can hope. And, uh, hopefully I'll be able to change their minds, you know? from Chris Hope stating the account was taken over by her brother, Jason Tian, also a minor. He has either personally or encouraged others or negligently allowed the account to be used by third parties to conduct criminal extortion and harassment as well as the torts of defamation and libel, making an already bizarre situation even bizarre. -er. Because despite the media frenzy that ensued back then, there was nothing but radio silence for another few years, naturally generating concern among spectators of the firestorm that was Lil Tay's online presence. Concerns that wouldn't be addressed again until April 2021. Bank on West Jackson Boulevard. Be advised. Assailants are armed and dangerous. Save Lil Tay from a life of abuse are the ominous first words to precede a $150,000 GoFundMe for Claire's purported legal battle against her father. This, along with photos of a younger Tay shown bruised up, were posted to her Instagram account after years of inactivity. Once again, I'm making Chris out to be an abuser, just looking for ways to exploit his daughter now that she's famous. According to one post, he had allegedly taken all 
all of her money and still owed up to 400 grand in child support, providing this video to reinforce the claim. You're gonna come in and abuse my mom and my sister now? Good job, Jason. <clears throat> nice one. And what about the millions of dollars you stole? Real mature, Chris. He owes six figures in child support. Do you know this? You haven't been in her life for years and now you show up? And now you want to use her career as blackmail to waive your child support expenses? How can you even explain this? And then you go on to manipulate the press to look like the hero parent. Have a good day. In addition to various videos of Claire crying over staying with her dad and images of Chris out with some woman, the GoFundMe goes into way more explicit detail, as the organizer, Jason, outlines a pattern of Chris's alleged negligence, citing a lack of fresh food for Claire, physical abuse dating all the way back to when she was a toddler, and a gross mishandling of the money she previously earned as an influencer. As he goes on to accuse her father of wasting the cash on extravagant trips, gifts, and women. With some screenshots here dating back to 2017, according to him, that seemed to paint Chris in a pretty worrying light, even making the claim that Chris would casually hook up with women in the same bed as his daughter, and was, quote, naked in front of Tay quite often. But some have been quick to question the legitimacy of the campaign, wondering if the evidence presented by Tay's brother is really enough to justify over $17,000 in funds. This case was supposed to start on April 23rd, right? When I went on the Supreme Court of Canada's page and looked up hearings and cases for this month, the 23rd wasn't even scheduled to have a case. I was just confused at first because it said, you are Tay's last hope in saving her from a life of but then they- I don't know, dude. Kinda seems like they're fucking- I mean, this guy might be a giant piece of shit in the end, so I, I, I don't know, but like, the so mom is not an honest broker, okay? Like, she, we already have established that she's like straight up a piece of shit. They told us that the father doesn't even have custody of her right now. Who is Lil Tay with right now? Why haven't we got like an updated picture? Tay's brother responded to this person and said, you're an effing idiot. The reason this happened is because the legal system is failing her. That is weird. Why would he respond to someone who wants the best for Lil Tay in an aggressive manner like that? I'm not convinced the brother wants the best for Lil Tay. As of the time of me writing this, months after its launch, we still have yet to see any substantial updates on the nature of the campaign. Bro, why do you constantly want me to watch this? Bro, first time smoking crack by Goblin. I'm not watching that. Whatever the fuck that is. Pain, no legal documents have been shown. They just posted this GoFundMe and dipped without saying another word, making it impossible for me to definitively say whether this campaign is truly going towards helping Claire. It's possible Tay isn't in a good place and needs the money. She hasn't come out and said anything herself, though some have pointed to a Canadian law for this being the case. I mean, after all, Chris is a lawyer. And if he truly was taking advantage of her funds, I don't doubt he'd know how to get away with it. But ultimately, I think the public deserves more clarity and reassurance that their money is actually going to assist Lil Tay personally. It doesn't help that she's been taken advantage of her entire career for her family to make a quick buck. And I don't blame people for being skeptical. These questions should always be asked when dealing with something so serious. And to me, it doesn't look like we'll be getting that closure anytime soon. As you can see, May 10th, he says, we're going to talk about God everything damn it, soon. No! And I'm like, okay, excited to see. Then it's just radio silence for months. So I hit him back and say, any updates on the Lil Tay situation? And he responds, I'm not associate with them anymore. I don't know anything about them. They disappeared, lol. With the way things have been handled, I hate to say it's unclear whether or not Claire Hope is currently being given the care she so desperately deserves. Like, I want to make my mom a proud. You guys are not doing anything with your life. You may not see it, but I'm trying to do, I'm trying to accomplish something. And you guys are preventing me from that. All y'all haters, like, I'm trying to accomplish my dreams. If you don't like me, just block me. I didn't do 
do anything to you. With so much inconclusive evidence leaving us with more questions than answers, all I can hope is that Tay is in a better place right now. It's not like any of us can even begin to imagine the things she experienced firsthand. At just nine years old, Claire had little to absolutely no say in the way she was being handled by those around her. Treated as nothing more than a cash cow by her family members who found a way to milk the algorithm in their favor. She won't be able to look back on her upbringing as anything close to traditional or even healthy. Her childhood was robbed by clout-hungry leeches, and I worry about the implications such a wild and tumultuous era could have on someone as impressionable as she was, and still is. The detriment of child stars is hardly a new concept. It's just now being repackaged thanks to the internet. And with the severe lack of legal restrictions protecting children from being exploited online, the consequences of such ventures are boundless. Despite what she may be forced to tell you, Lil Tay didn't sign up for this lifestyle. And my only hope is that she's able to live out the rest of her adolescence in peace. Keep on, keep on. That's a bummer. That's an absolute bummer. An absolute gigantic bummer that we didn't get to fucking... I really thought that there was going to be some uh, closure on that one.